Welcome to another episode of Failing Success. I'm your host, Chad Kalecki with Cosmic Design. Today on the show, we have Jake Wagner. His company is 4FP Agency. It's a digital marketing agency for financial planners. So to start off, I would like to know, how did you get into this niche, Jake? Yeah, absolutely. So like a lot of people, I was, I was actually, I kind of did this backwards that my father was a financial planner and from him, I learned how important money was in our lives. And basically, like, I know that we're all going to get old and achy and want to go on more vacations than work 40 hours a week. And preparing for that is mission critical. And that a lot of people don't know how. And a lot of people don't have the resources for that. And I have had the chance to grow up learning from a whole lot of the best financial planners and basically saw how important this was. And so I started this agency to make it so that we actually, they're not the best at marketing. And I want to actually help them do what they are the best at, which is financial planning. So I took a whole bunch of the skills that I've got and brought it together. And basically first really started doing marketing for financial planners. And at this point, we're strategic growth consultants where we're using the framework from the digital the certified partnership with digital marketer to create a repetitive process, a predictable process that makes it so that we bring growth, bring ideal clients to our prospects and to our, to our clients. How many years ago did you start the marketing agency? When I started the marketing agency, it was a tech consultancy thing from about 2013 to 2017. In 2017, it really became a marketing company. And then we became partners with Digital Marketer. And funny enough, that actually really just kind of changed it so that we moved from making funnels or websites or other things like that for people to actually creating these systems where it's like, okay, we're going to create awareness for it. Find your ideal client here. We're going to think about what they want to engage with. What is it that's going to make them want to raise their hand and say, can you help me? And to do that in a predictable and planned way. And, and that's really taken our firm up a level in the services that we provide. Can you give us a story of a struggle you encountered in building out this business? I think one good struggle that's coming to mind right now is in the vein of getting some the funds, operating capital and taking on, there's some, there was a loan, it was a $20,000 loan that I paid back in a year. And so that was $500 a week of having to make sure that that money was there on top of everything else. And that was, that was really tough. It was just, it was a lot of hustle and also I stayed afloat, but at the same time, it would have been really nice to actually have that money more in my pocket rather than pre-spent. A lot of people think uh, you become an entrepreneur, you make all this money overnight. There's debt, there's <laughs> bad clients, there's all these issues you run into. So. After you got through paying off that debt, was that, and then you had your baseline and you were able to go from. Yeah, exactly. I mean, well, and that was, yeah. Yeah. And also a part of that process made it so that I was able to go from being a one person shop to having a back office and more people. And at this point we've changed back offices and we're working with other freelancers, but yeah, it is what got it so that I was moving from being a solo practitioner to being, to working and managing a team and managing a team. And having more than one person is also a really difficult thing in business. It starts out with, you know how to do everything and you know your way of doing it, but it's probably not documented. And as you bring people on, having them do everything from them doing the right quality of work to having a good, you know, relationship and the ability to communicate a brief really well, especially if you're working with folks overseas who speak other languages or is a language barrier and that's just what it is. And it's different for every country too. And making it so that you actually have where it's not you doing all the things, but there's where there's a list and a series of roles and tasks that you can hire for and have people slotted into. And how different a company is when you move past that place where you're doing it all yourself. And you still do a whole lot yourself. It's just getting the stuff that can be done predictably done by somebody else. Yeah. So when you come in with your growth strategy, is that part of what you teach? Yeah, absolutely. So as far as that part of the business and the offering, what we have is on one hand, we have an all-in-one marketing solution that does phone calls, records, everything, two-way text messages, email campaigns, like post on social media, all that kind of stuff with tech support built in and all that, all that kind of stuff. And then on the other side, we have our strategic growth consulting that's based on the human to human process of intimacy. And so 
when we are actually going and helping people with the strategic growth consultancy is when we're, we're creating those sorts of results for them. So one big part of this is it's called the growth triad. And it uses a combination of having a documented journey where you know how your ideal client is going to come to you and the transformation that's going to happen with them. And there's another part where you need to have metrics. And this is a part of where it's not. And that what we're doing is that we're actually taking metrics based on each one of those stages of intimacy and saying, okay, we're having enough people be aware, but they're not engaging with you. Maybe they're engaging with you and maybe they're engaging on social media, but not on your website or not in person, something like that. You know, are they making that first phone call to have that short conversation to be pre-qualified? And each one of those things, those are all metrics. And if there's a problem with one of those stages and where something's low, then I actually have specific sessions that I can go in and say, okay, we're going to do this to fix the conversion stage. And that's the third component is tools and tactics. And so it's really all three of those things. And what we're providing is that framework, the accountability of making sure to have it be measured. And then also there's parts of our process where when someone is doing this work with us, we have a, a piece called the growth lever canvas. And while we're doing this work, someone writes down the bottlenecks that they have in their business. They, they write down those bottlenecks that they have in their business. And then they also, we write down the opportunities that they have. And so one of the things that comes out of this session naturally is that we actually even help them set their compass. And that we say, okay, you have these 30 things you want to do because, and you don't have enough time to do them all. And so, nor maybe some of them aren't going to make a and so we actually go through a process and weigh and measure them. And at the end of that, they have, okay, in the next three months, we're going to do these. So that we have this, this sequence that we know people are going to be going through and that we can tell where things are healthy. And that also with our clients, we're doing three months of growth consulting where we set this in place. And ideally we're coming back and doing two, four hour sessions a quarter to keep them on track through at least like 12 to 18 months is pretty typical for folks to work with us. But as a result, it's one part is learning, but the other part is actually in the real deliverable is having this system in place so that that way they can focus on the clients, know that the time they're giving is really going to make the biggest difference in growing their company. Does that make sense? It does. Is this still focused on the finance industry or is that scaled out? I focus on the finance industry. I am open to working with the right other person. I don't tend to want to work with e-commerce or stuff like that. However, if someone who's listening wants to learn more about this, still send me an email. And if we're not appropriate to help with, there is a community of certified partners. And one of those other people absolutely is qualified. And so I can still make sure to connect to someone, even if they're not our ideal client. If somebody wanted to get in touch with you or your company, how would they do so? Yeah, my email is jake at 4fp.co, the number four. And you can find our website at 4fp.co. All right, well, thank you, Jake, for being on the show today. And thank you, everybody, for listening to another episode of Failing to Success. I'm your host, Chad Kalecki with Cosmic Design. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe, and we'll see you next time. Mm -hmm.